Hello and welcome to the Melo Dream Forging tutorial. There will be timestamps in the video description, so use those to skip ahead if you need to. First off, thanks for watching this. My goal for this mod was to complement vanilla mechanics without replacing them. However, your server may have it set up is up to them. In this mod, you can make many tools and even nails and a dagger. Do note that no tool right now, unless changed by your server, is better than vanilla tools. Now let's get started on the Melo Dream Forging tutorial. In this video, uh, we're going to be talking about the how to get started. Uh, so, in this mod, you will have a book that is findable called the Melody and Forging Guide. This should be in your server's economy or possibly given to you by your server owner. If you take it into your hands, you can open it up and it has a guide. Over here in this area will be a, area, um, a YouTube link to this video. So you ever pick up this video, um, book and found it thing in this book will describe all of my overall recipes and how to get started and how to work with everything else so there we have it it's a nice little book definitely uh, pretty nice all right to get started in this mod you need to find some stuff in the economy so what you need to find is a clay package a pickaxe and a hammer once you have all these three items you are set to start now when you take the clay package in your hand you can unpack it real quick and it will give you a certain amount of clay it gave me 35 clay and a piece of paper so what do you do now that you have clay a pickaxe and a hammer well you go out in the world and you look for ore boulders boulders look a lot like um, rocks in the game so you have to come up close to them from a distance to see what they look like there are three boulders in the world um, with many more coming in the future one is a uh, stone boulder there's a coal boulder and then there's an iron boulder now when you walk up to the boulders the boulders will give you a material for mining it Mining is, um, boulders is a continuous action, so when the cycle completes, it will go around again and keep mining, which means that it will put the stuff on the ground beneath your feet every time it cycles. Now, uh, when it reaches zero quantity, it will delete the boulder itself, so the boulder uh, has a chance to respawn elsewhere. And this is how to get the basic stuff. See, there's a quantity bar on there, so you can ha have an idea of how much is left in the boulder. So I'm getting large stones and small stones from this boulder. The boulders have different textures, and how those textures are spotted by you and what or what boulder yields what ore is up to you. All right. Well. Let's look at how to get started with a, um, how to use the ores that you've got. So let's do that. All right. So now let's talk about how to get resources from the ores and how to use the clay for making the stuff for the blacksmithing. So here we have ourselves some coal ore. You get the coal ore from the boulders as we talked about before, and you can use a hammer to extract the coal or to extract, or you can use a pickaxe to extract the coal itself. Whichever one's faster or more efficient or yields more coal is up to you to figure out. Once you are extracting coal, this is the coal that you will get. Um, and it stacks up to 10. You can take 10 coal plus 10 coal, 20 coal in total, to make a stacked pile of coal. The pile of coal is a universal heating element for the forges and the smelters. So you definitely want to do that. You can also take coal and you can re-add it to the pile of coal one at a time to increase the pile of coal. Obviously be wary of how much you do. I suggest doing one at a time just to be aware. Over here we have our clay. Now clay can be used for many things. Clay can create crucibles, molds, shaping the clay smelter, and in the future making the uh, bullet encasing tip molds. Now, 
to make the clay, unfired clay crucible, which it's unfired, so you have to fire it once you make it, you have to have crushed bones plus a certain amount of clay. Now, to get crushed bones, you just take a hammer plus a pile of bones, and you can crush the bones into bone powder, which then you can use to combine with clay to make a clay crucible. Again, this clay crucible is uh, unfired and cannot be uh, used until it is fired. So here you can shape molds combining clay and plant material together to make the molds. You can make the nugget mold, the bar mold, the ingot mold, and clay bricks, and then finally the anvil mold. Uh, the molds, obviously, depending on the size of them, will take up clay and plant material and are useful. When you make the clay bricks, it makes unfired clay bricks that you have to fire in the smelter, same as the clay crucible. If you take 80 clay plus 5 sticks, you can make a shape crude smelter, which is the very beginning smelter in the whole process of getting started in this. Furthermore, once you have made uh, fired bricks inside your smelter with the unfired bricks, you can put together enough of the fired bricks that you can assemble either a forge or an assemble a smelter. The better smelter that is made with the bricks provides a better material um, or when it actually smelts it. Where the crude smelter will give you cast iron, the approved smelter will give you impure iron ore. And that is <clears throat> it for the crafting recipes for getting started and crafting the basic components. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to start the smelting process. All right, now we're gonna be looking about how to put ore into your crucibles and then how to smelt your ore down. Now, what you can do in the economy is you can find metal crucibles that are empty, or you can obviously make your own fire crucible inside of your smelter. Now, once you have found yourself a crucible, you can take iron ore and you can put it in it. Do note that if you are using ammo making and metallurgy and forging mod together, the crucible you find might be a uh, thing for ammo making and not necessarily for metallurgy and forging. This will be fixed in upcoming patches. Each crucible can hold two iron ore to go up to 100% um, ore filled crucible. Then once you have that, you can go over to your smelter. Now there is a material, there is an option to dump the metal so you can get back an empty one. So you just attach it to that slot and then you take your matches and then you ignite it. Now mind you, the material that comes out, or the molten metal that comes out of the forges in this situation are going to be dependent upon what kind of smelter you use. Some cool factors is that the smelters do cast their own light and they do have their own smoke system, which unfortunately I was not able to make work with the uh, buildings um, physics, but as you can see, the smoke is quite thing, and it can be seen quite a while. Now, mind you, the, the smoke does become gray and then uh, white, and then does dissipate eventually, but it is able to be seen for quite a distance away. Then, once it locks, it will delete the, the crucible that was attached here, and we'll put a crucible down here. The crucible down here, as you can see, is pig iron. That's because we're using a crude smelter. So we're getting cast iron or pig iron um, metal. This um, wrench means that it is locked and you cannot take it out of there. Um, after an X amount of time has passed, the wrench will go away and you will be able to pull the molten metal out. Now, depending on your server settings, you may have to heat the molten metal up to a certain degree as you can see here, now it's done because I have the settings really short. And then you can go over to these molds. So here's the ingot mold, the nugget mold, and then the bar mold. Or you can go over to your anvil mold. I would suggest going to the anvil mold first. You're uh, making an anvil for your forge is a very important process. 
So, this took out almost all of my molten metal, and now I would need to cast another anvil. So, what we're going to do here is we're just going to go over here, and you would probably have to repeat this process tw tw twice. And then we're going to cast the thing. Now, when I spawned it in, I used a admin power to make the mold, um, for, to make the crucible hot immediately. All right. And now what we can do is if you look in the mold, look, we have a anvil mold here, but we can't, we can't remove it. So you take a hammer and you look at your anvil mold and you smash it with a hammer. And then it goes boom. And then it ruins the mold. But in there, you can now remove your um, anvil. Now, mind you, this anvil cannot be used currently yet. We need to go and find a stump. So let's go ahead and go find a stump. We need an axe. So, we got a wood axe, and then we need to go to a place where we can chop down a tree that yields a stump. There are, there are a number of trees around the area that yield stumps, but you need to figure out where they are and which ones yield which ones. So, you're going to be chopping down quite a few trees. This is one of the trees that yields a stump. All right, so now we have a bunch of building logs and we have a stump. Now, do note that the stump itself is not 100% unusable other than for uh, forging. You can take your axe and you can split the log into split wood. Split wood can be used to make charcoal, which will be coming when I introduce the vanilla crafting recipe update. I mean, uh, ammo making thing. So now that you got this, what you do is you take your handmade anvil and you combine it and you attach it to a stump. This will um, make a stump with an anvil on top of it, as you can see here, and then you can place it down. And now we have ourselves our own handmade anvil and a stump. But don't worry, there are anvils inside the loot economy based off your server settings that you can find. So you can find these high quality anvils around the world. And these high quality anvils matter. As you can see, we have it right here. Now, unlike the improvised um, anvil what you do here is you can take a stump and you can go to your anvil and you can see the anvil base right here just put it on there and then you can take it into your hands and you can place it where you want and voila you now have a anvil a premium anvil these anvils are the best anvils in the entire mod uh then you have impure um, cast iron anvils, impure iron anvils, and then you have finally pure iron anvils, with the high quality anvil being the king. All right. You can also cast metal into any of these things. Of course, the temperature to cast the metal ingots, bars, or nuggets is up to your server. As you can see here. I have a ingot mold in there, and I have a cast iron ingot that I can take out. And then if I wanted to, I could pour another one if I had enough thing. Now, as you see, I have 0% inside of this thing. So what I can do is I can go over here, I can pour this in there. Oh, mind you, getting close to smelters and stuff will do a flashing red temp, which will hurt your health. So do be aware of that. And then I have an empty crucible again, which could be filled up 
and used to um, take care of people or cast more things. So now that we learned how to create all the items inside uh, um, sm of the smelting process, let's talk about the items you can make and how you can make them inside of uh, this whole process. So let's get started. So as we talk about what can be made, we first need to talk about what can be crafted um, in the uh, forging process. So each obviously grade of metal produced by the smelters, cast iron and pure iron and finally pure iron, all has different strengths. Um, one, the one being better than the last. So with cast iron, you can make obviously a ingot, a bar, and a nugget. And you can then use nuggets to create nails. And then you can use the ingot to create the shovel head, the axe head, the pickaxe head, and then finally the hammer head. When you have completed these um, crude cast iron tool heads, all you need to do is combine them with a stick. So the shovel head, the cast iron pickaxe head, the axe head, and then the hammer head all take short sticks, where the cast iron shovel head takes a long stick. All right. Next, you can, um, with impure iron, you can craft tool wedges and obviously nails as well from the um, nuggets and the ingots. But do be aware that um, you can also craft a iron axe head, a, a pickaxe head, a shovel head, a hammer head, and then finally a real axe head. This is a hatchet head. Now, once you have done that, what you can do is you can get a long wooden handle or a short wooden handle, depending on the scale. So the hammer head and the hatchet head use the short handle. And then the axe head, pickaxe head, and the shovel head use the long handle. But how do you get these handles? Well, all you do is take a knife and you go up to a long wooden log to carve a long wooden handle. Um, you get two of these for a wooden log, or you can carve up a piece of firewood to carve a dagger hilt, which is used for the making of the dagger, or a short handle. Once you have one of these created, all you have to do is go over here, put in your hands, and you can see here it has a tool wedge option. As you can see, I cannot actually make the hammerhead or the hatchet head right now. All I have to do is forge some metal wedges, attach them, and then I can now assemble the impure iron hammer. As you can see, that's all that needed to happen. Pretty cool. The same with the pure, um, pure iron tools as well. They themselves need to have a handle crafted or whittled from the building log or the firewood and need to have tool wedges to help put it together. Now, how do you get these kind of tool heads made? Well, first you've got to make your forges. The one on the right is the basic forge, and the one on the left is the improved forge. They are fueled by, you guessed it, a pile of coal. So this is where the pile of coal goes. I made the little graphics. And then you can see where the metal goes. The metal goes down here. And all you need to do is have a pile of matches, and you can ignite it. The metal will start to heat up as the forge starts to heat up. And you can see the texture changed. Now, depending on the settings of your server, the time it takes for the metal to heat up is dependent on the server settings. But I have made it so that the metal ingot heats up slowly over time as the um, forge itself heats up. So it's 300 degrees. The metal has yet to take on any of the heat. Take that off, put it back in just for fun. 
400. Now you can see it's starting to take a temperature. So it's 50 Celsius. All right, so on my settings, on my server, I have it set to, uh, on my example video here, I have it set to 50 Celsius is when it um, is hot enough to be uh, worked into anything that it can be worked into. So you will see a visual change in the texture. It will look like it's glowing hot. And then all you have to do is put it onto the anvil. Now, once you put it onto the anvil, it will start to cool down. And once it goes below the forging temperature, it will change back to its normal color. The reason for doing this is I wanted a physical representation of when the metal was hot enough to be worked versus when it was too cold to be worked. Because if I were to start forging on this um, cast iron ingot when it was almost, um, you know, cold, I would not be able to uh, continue the action fully. It would stop me midway. But as you can see, when I look at the action with a hammer in my hand, and this can be a pure iron hammer, a impure iron hammer, or a uh, cast iron hammer. Um, You can see that it goes away and see now that it's at 40 degrees celsius i can no longer do any forging actions so all i have to do is put it back into the uh smelter and then i just gotta wait for it to heat back up and we can tell if it's heated back up because the texture will change again see there you go and now i know the metal's hot enough to be worked but keep in mind because the metal changes texture does not mean that the metal will stay hot enough long enough for you to finish your job. So once the metal is heated up hot enough again, we can then take it and put it on to the face of the anvil and we can switch the actions by left clicking and going through the actions. So we're going to make an ax head. Now, the time it takes to forge the ax head and the time the metal temperature that is required to forge is up to your server owner to provide. Default is 1500 degrees or above to be able to forge any of these stuff. So once you get done forging, you can see that your ax head is now right there inside of the metal icon slot. And that folks is how you create items from metal. So Let's take a look at all of the items and uh, how they look in hand and such when you use them. So let's do that. Okay, let's look at all of the items that you can create in the mod so far. So we have the cast iron axe, which you can use to chop down trees and uh, melee weapon. You have the cast iron hammer, which you can use to build and whatever hammers are used for. You can make a cast iron pick, which can be used for mining the ores. And then finally, you can make yourself a cast iron shovel. All of the shovel and the, no, the pickaxe and the ax can be repaired with sharpening stones. Over here, we have the impure iron ax. You can see we have a gorgeous model here made by myself. The hand placement down there is a little bit off, but I could do better. You have a nice pickaxe. You can see the uh, wedges up above. Overall, not bad work. I could obviously do better uh, work later on. We have a nice shovel. And then finally, we have a hatchet. Oh, no, we have a hatchet and then we'll finally we'll have a hammer. Now, you notice that the hatchet says turn around. That's because when the blade part is facing forward, you could cut down trees, uh, get lumber, stuff like that. But if you flip it around, you can use this end to hammer in nails and um, other things that you use a hammer for. Don't worry, the health of the item will change along, uh, will transfer along with it every time you change it. 
And then finally, you have the Pure Iron Hammer. Then we have Pure Iron Tools. Now, one of the things that you can make only with Pure Iron um, is, well, actually you can make the dagger with Pure Iron, but it takes like 10 of them. And then the Pure Iron, it takes like three or four. But you can make yourself a little nice dagger. Uh, yes, it looks like the Skyrim dagger, and it was made by Mass for me. Mass did an amazing job on that. Then we have the Pure Iron Hatchet, which should be, uh, which you can turn around to. You have the Iron Hammer. Then you have the Pure Iron Axe. And then we have the Pickaxe, and we have the Shovel. The Pure Iron is the best of all the tools that you can make in my mod pack. How you get to pure iron is up to you to figure out. All I can give you a hint is that the material that is often used most in my mod is the secret to getting pure iron. So with that, folks, we have covered all the stuff that we need to know about Hellergene Forging. So Next, we're just going to talk about the future and what I have in store for the next couple updates. So let's talk about that. So thank you for watching this tutorial video of my Melody and Forging tutorial. I really appreciate it. In the future, I plan on introducing a crossbow with craftable crossbow bolts, as well as introducing more melee weapons. This last update, Forging 2.0, introduced a new way to forging that made the process far, far easier for me to introduce stuff. I will also be including in my scripts, as well as inside of the mod folder itself, notes on how a person who wished to make their own mod that works off of this mod's core concepts can do. They can make their own weapons, their own armor, anything they wish using this mod as a core basis. Thank you again for me very much for watching and have a wonderful day.